Hello, this is Christine's Aesthetic Art and Travel. And I started this YouTube channel because many people have told me how they would love to do more art, but they're not sure what to do. Or they felt that after school there was no one to teach them, or they got told they were no good in school and they didn't take it up again yet all sorts of reasons and I created this channel to try and encourage people to do more art, to have more fun and to address that problem. Um, today I'm looking at northern Spain um, at the end of this video I'm going to montage a whole lot of photos that I took in northern Spain. I find travel particularly inspiring uh, for artists. New environments, new light, new colour, new culture, new people. Um, input tends to lead to inspiration. I don't believe that sitting in a dark room with your thoughts leads to inspiration. New ideas tend to come from new input and that's why travel is particularly inspiring and it changes your fixed opinions about what's the way things are. So, I am going to paint a lovely beach view. I was in, let me see, um, I was in Northern Spain for about two months, I think, um, maybe a bit less, driving around um, in a beat up Ford van that I and my mum built some beds in, a little bit of help from my big brother as well. And I did all the driving and we took a ferry over to, we took a ferry over to Santander on the coast of Northern Spain. This is a beach that I'm painting very near Santander with me and my family. And we had a wonderful time just driving from place to place, sleeping in um, little camper van stops and um, cooking on a little stove. It was a very basic camper or eating out and things are pretty cheap in northern Spain and it's very friendly and they make children super welcome. So I promised that this would be Christine's aesthetic art and travel and we're finally getting some travel. So far I've been talking all about the art. So yeah, they make children super welcome. In fact, my little blonde son used to get picked up and hugged by people. And we really don't do that without permission in England and Scotland for that matter. And um, so at first me and my daughter would jump worriedly. But after a while we got used to the idea that people just scooped him up and started showing him things like, oh look, here's the Christmas decorations or whatever they just wanted to show him and uh, you know you're coming off the beach with wet sandy kids and they say come in come in <laughs> you know <laughs> make you so welcome there and we um we were on a, a tiny budget we had no proper toilet or kitchen my son was not quite two but we created the phrase another day another bay because we were just out there having fun going from place to place and I found it hugely inspirational when I came home I did new paintings on the way I sketched I wrote in I wrote a blog um I just all the new input and the new light where you get bright blazing light because we have often a lot of gray overcast weather in the UK when you get bright blazing light, you get strong contrasty shadows and this changes the way your art looks. If you look at what I'm doing later on, I'm going to put some real strong dark bits in the, um, in the view here because the bright light will make them uh, noticeable, it won't be flat. So I totally rate Northern Spain. Um, on what I'm doing, start with a nice big brush. Don't give yourself cramp. Um, I 
was advised once by an artist, use the biggest brush you dare. And I have found that to be good advice. Here I have some sea. I want to create a few little cliffs in the city, a bit of beach and a whole lot of sand dune grass. Um, the um, grass, I've got this fan brush for a lot of the colour I was just laying down with this big square brush. Um, brushes, I'm, I'm a great exponent of cheap art materials if they're not horrendous. Like go for student quality, maybe not the, the dollar shop, the pan shop. Um, but brushes, get the best ones you reasonably can. Like you might expect to pay six or eight pounds a brush um, and um, wash them carefully because then they're quite expensive. This one, I've chopped it shorter so that it fits in my tin so that I can take it places. Um, and um, yeah, it's definitely worth spending a little bit on brushes because if they constantly lose hair, it's still driving nuts. Um, and if they don't have any spring back, so if they're very, I mean, this one's deliberately soft because it's just for holding a whole lot of paint while you trail decoration on things, but, um, or do calligraphy. But as you can see, it doesn't really spring back. It's just a big fluff. And if you actually want to create brush strokes, you want some spring back, and that means buying slightly more decent brushes. Now I put this down with watercolor and then I'm going to work more careful detail with Derwent Ink Tense pencils. This one's called Iron Blue. And um, the surface is slightly wet, which is fine because it will just make the um, water soluble pencils go darker. These are not actually water soluble pencils, they're solid ink. So that's why they're called ink tents because they make them with solid ink. So they've got some cliffs, some castles, some little houses. I love to scribble, me. I, I don't necessarily sit there and draw every little cottage or whatever, but people have different styles. And I tend to just, I'm always going for the mood. Now, interestingly, when I was traveling, I was wondering about this because I took photographs and then I also made sketches. And I was in Porto in Portugal and I did this sketch and then I asked people on Facebook, um, does the sketch add anything not already said by the 50 or 100 photographs that I had shared of Porto? And the answer was pretty unanimously, oh yes, definitely, it adds more atmosphere, it adds more information, it shows which details you personally were interested in, it shows the feeling of the place in a different way. Obviously my photographs are artwork in their own right, but clearly bringing a different art form did add or change how people felt about the thing. So this is the sea, and then we have the beach, which is sandy, and then San Juni. And there's some very light bits on top of these distant castles, the city of Santander across the bay. We'd cross the bay on a little ferry, and we're looking back across to Santander. Um, from this little sort of surf town which had a surf beach on one side and a super sheltered beach where the ferry came in on the other side. Absolutely heavenly place. Northern Spain does get quite cold in winter. It doesn't quite have the, the constant sun that attracts people for holidays in southern Spain. Um, but it's not so built up and so touristy and um it's utterly beautiful it's much more empty especially if you get right out onto the shoulder above portugal it's all the celtic bit they actually have bagpipes and um tartan and they'll tell you oh we're, we're, we're celts you know or um like the scottish people like the irish people and uh 
it's very cheap. The economy is a bit busted up, in, to be honest, which is a shame for them, but it certainly makes it easier to go there and eat out. And um, you can go on the Pilgrim Trail, the um, what they call the way, uh, the Camino. And you can walk that, you can walk uh, 100 kilometers or whatever. And we were just driving in our van from place to place that were on the Pilgrim Trail. And the Pilgrim Trail is lined with shells. The symbol of the Camino is a little shell and um, there's thousands of year old shells on all the buildings showing you the way and set into the path. And so me and my kids played the game of following the shells. So you can see I'm just creating an impression. I'm not attempting to draw every blade of grass on the sand dunes. And that is completely valid if that's your style. But it's never really been my style to, um, I would describe myself as a bit impressionist. And so I just scribble in a bit and the mind adds the detail or give the mood. And um, I think I'm going back to my set of paints here. My fan brush. Um, there's so much you can learn from watching someone work. I'm going to put some of this darker colour I promised in here. When I was a kid, I used to sit and um, watch my dad work. I used to sit and watch my mum make ceramics, paint, make sew costumes. I used to sit and watch my brother. He would work with his airbrush or draw. Um, and um, there really is a lot to learn from you know, copying other artists in a, in a learning way. Obviously, don't publish it and say it was yours, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with sitting down to copy um, a Manet you like or something, or, um, and just um, see what you learn from doing it, um, as well as following more explanation -y tutorials and things you can and as well as learning things like colour theory and shading and other things that I've done tutorials on. You can just watch people and you're bound to evolve ideas and learn things. Um, so, yeah, what do we think of this? I still think I want more contrast. I want more darker bits. So I'm just going to be brave. One of my favourite ideas about art is that you always have to be ready to wreck it. You have to be um, ready to draw the other hand. You know, I did such a beautiful job of drawing the first hand. Oh no, I don't want to draw the other one. And what if I wreck it? Um, or, you know, what if I scribble all over this and don't like it? Okay, what if you do? You know, make another one, get it right in the next time. It's um, true that you are the golden goose. You're the one producing this wonderful art. You're the one creating an effect that gives everybody a lift, a spiritual soul food that they don't get from, you know, doing the shopping down the supermarket or something, you can do it again. You can do it more. And maybe, you know, this thing went through a phase where you liked it and then it went through a phase where you didn't like it and then now it feels dull and dead. Well, take a risk. Scribble all over it right at the end and see if it, um, turns out good or you know don't worry get it right in the next one so you have to try to have fun and not be too precious about it others may not agree with me um, if you're really precious and you love something and you don't want to change it but you do want to try something another interesting thing you can do is take a photograph of it and be okay here it is at that stage where I loved it and now I'm going to be brave and change it and if it does turn awful I've still got the photograph um, but I actually like this with more, more courage, if you see what I mean, more cha uh, and more contrast, most definitely. Now, something that I'm going to do, I think, is once this dries, I'm going to pick out white waves in here, breakers. I have this um, chalk marker. There's all sorts of different things you can use. I even have a Tipex pen somewhere, you know, uh, for correcting mistakes in writing. And um, I'm gonna pick out just a few breakers in the waves here, just give them bright, pure white 
foaming white horses and that will also create more contrast because I don't want to make it all dark. That's not how you create contrast. We want light and dark areas that jump out. Deep indigo. You can tell I love this color. I've worn it away like crazy. Um, all my greens turn out kind of blue. That's just a personal preference. I'm like Picasso in his blue period. Everything I do turns out a bit blue. But that doesn't mean that you have to sit down and do bluish looking things. Good. Yeah, that feels very alive to me. More alive than it did before I went, let's be brave, let's be willing to wreck it. Um, so I'm going to sign it, even though it's not quite finished, because it has to dry before I add this. And I'll share a photograph at the end where um, I've added that. Yes, good, that's very satisfactory. So I'm going to be sure and carefully clean my brushes and put my materials away so that they don't get wrecked. And um, if you enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe. Um, and you can even hit the bell for notifications uh, so that you know when I make another art video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hello again. So I promised to montage some of my pictures of northern Spain for you at the end, and I thought I'd also tell you some of the places. So this is Somo, which is opposite uh, Santander. You can take a little ferry across the bay. Here's the ferry. And it takes you to this lovely promontory of land, which um, sticks out into the estuary, and one side has a sea-facing beach where people surf, and it has waves and the other side has a very sheltered beach facing back to the estuary. Moving on we went around the coast of Galicia um, just stopping in any bay that took our fancy and sleeping in airs which are um, camper only stops like little car parks sometimes with showers or other facilities that are either free or a few euros and um, you just stop there for a night or two nights or three nights and move on and you can get a book of them you can get books um, that show you all the airs in Europe and they're all over France, Spain and Portugal we had the book of those three places this is Orciguera it was so peaceful and kept thinking of it as almost my homeland of Scotland because of this light um, but of course unlike Scotland it's all Catholic it's not a sort of mix of Catholic and Protestant further on we came still following the way the Camino Camino means path um, we came to Pedron this is Pedron and you can see um, the lovely red roofs so typical of the Mediterranean and my kids enjoying themselves exploring and finally on to Santiago de Compostela which is the end of the pilgrim trail except some people carry on right to the sea and in Santiago de Compostela is the church where people finish their trail and at about every minute or even more frequently a pilgrim arrives who's walked a minimum of a hundred miles to this place from church to church and their faces are filled with so much awe and accomplishment. And it really is a truly spiritual feeling to be there. I'm not personally a Catholic, but the day that we arrived and the following day, there was a double rainbow over this cathedral that people had walked a thousand miles to arrive at. And I was kind of thinking, blimey, there's got to be something to this. <laughs> um, it really is um, beautiful, both from a point of view of the history and um, also from a point of view of the spiritual sense or the sense of connectedness to thousands of years of pilgrims, hundreds of years of pilgrims walking. And this is Santiago de Comastajala at night. Um, we stayed here I think about a week and made several trips into the city. 
and finally I just included a few pictures of the paintings that I did when I came home and how the lasting inspiration stayed with me and the one that I did in the tutorial. Thank you very much.